Hello everyone, and welcome back to another wunderbar tutorial uh, by yours truly. Um, we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at environments, just uh, how to create quick, good looking environments. And also we'll take a little look about um, world composition and how we can uh, utilize that um, to our advantage to make sort of slightly bigger environments before we begin though I just want to uh, show you um, a couple of packs that I'm going to be using in um, within this uh, within this tutorial uh, where did that go I think I just closed that's annoying let's reopen that again sorry about that my computer's been doing that a little bit recently so um, it doesn't like keeping things open for more than 30 seconds so we're gonna marketplace. Are we gonna no? Oh, come on. And uh, we're gonna search for. If it doesn't, if it closes again, I'll I'll just talk about it and you can search for it yourself. But um, oh, it's uh, oh god. It's trying to open up the web version now. Jesus, I just want to search for products. I just want to search for your products. There we go. Brushify is the name of this one. Um, uh, can't remember the name of the guy who makes this. Joe Garth, I think his name is something like that. Um, really, really brilliant packs. I don't own them all, uh, obviously, because they they can be a little bit pricey. Uh, but I do own ones like the Roads, which we will look at in this tutorial uh, when we create our environment. Uh, I own the forest. You can see which ones I own because it says owned on there. But I've got the forest pack as well because it gets some great trees. You get some great foliage and things like that from these packs, and the natural road pack as well. Which we're going to be using the natural roads pack and the forest pack for this uh, quick tutorial. Um, but as you can see, if you wanted to like tropical island, look a bit like Far Cry, you can get those sort of things as well. So really, really just powerful, powerful tools, especially for beginners. Uh, definitely well worth the money. Um, and I, I highly recommend them. I use them uh, for any sort of projects I'm using out, outdoor areas. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Uh, so we, we started with third person tutorial, uh, tutorial, third person uh, project. Um, but we're, we're not going to really worry too much about this. We're obviously using the third person example. Uh, but we're going to create a new level. Just call this. Um, oh, it really doesn't make much difference. Let's just call it uh, level one for now. It really, really doesn't matter. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, move. I don't know why I did that either. So, open this up. You're going to end up with this complete and utterly blank project, which is fine. We'll. You'll see. You'll see how it all change in a minute. Um, the first thing I want to do is um, grab a skylight and grab a directional light and grab what's the other thing I want? Um, uh, height fog. There you go. Um, sky atmosphere. Yeah, we'll go for sky atmosphere. Uh, an atmospheric fog. Okay, it'll probably be a bit too much, bit overkill, but it's fine. We'll um. We'll play around with this a little bit later, um, but it just allows you to see your world anyway. But it, but that's the general gist of what you're going to want to drag in. Uh, then we want to go to up to modes at the top here, and we're going to click on a landscape very quickly. Um, don't worry about too much. I mean, you can mess around with these these as, as much as you want. What it does, is if I scroll out, uh, if I zoom out a little bit, sorry, you can change it to like it's it's essentially changing the size of your uh landscape okay but one thing you want to make sure is whatever size you use uh, i use something normally kind of medium smallish because it's better to you get a lot more control out of it essentially and you can sort of mark landscapes and, and key areas and things like that a lot easier uh but just depending on whatever you do right so if you had number of components 10 to 10 by 10 right which makes your overall resolution 631 by 631 i mean if you really want to up your resolution you want it to be like almost a, a 2k environment or a landscape you want it to be a 32 by 32 component which on a 63 by 63 quad is is pretty mahusive right but you'll get a lot more detail and things like that out of it so we're going to do that we're just 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 for now to show you guys um 
all of this good stuff. Okay. Uh, if we go back to our content, so click content. That was in the third person blueprint, by the way, we set that up. So just so you know for later, come into your brushify pack and come to uh, materials and you want to go to landscape. You've got this MI landscape tool. Okay. When you drag that and you put it onto here, uh, you also might need to click on the landscape in a minute. You'll see what happened in a minute, but we're going to create our landscape now. Okay. Um, this might take a few seconds. It might also crash the first time you do it. You never know, but um, hopefully it doesn't too much. But you, you'll end up with this. It almost looks like an ocean, right? It looks like an oceany kind of material. It's, it's like a metallic-y black kind of thing. Um, what you want to do is come up to here at the top right here where it says paint. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're going to want to, depending on which one you want, right? Because you've got all these different um, possibilities down here. Uh, you've got all these different types. Depending on what you're after, you would literally just go into here and you would click on the grass layer info. If it hasn't got any grass layer info, you just create one. You create a weight blended um, layer info. But we're just going to click grass, right? And what will happen is it's gonna, you're going to see it's like not responding for a second. That's because what it's doing is it's now determining uh, all of our height values on this bit of landscape. Now, it's all flat, so it should all just automatically come to grass. When I start to morph it, so here you go, there you go, you've got this lovely, and, and it, this is how big it is, right? That looks like I'm very far away, okay? Yeah, when I'm up close, yeah, it's like a visual effect. So, for example, if I was to now, we'll get to that in a second, actually, sorry. So we've got our environment, right? Let's go to sculpt for a second, okay? We're going to sculpt in a bit of area. I want to make this smaller, way, way smaller, right? Here you go, okay? So you can see one of our... <laughs> massive quads right okay this is how big this world is going to be right so i'm going to really i don't want any fall off so let's get rid of the fall off all right and let's make the strength one just so it really gives it a good go right so where we've picked grass now we've raised it. this is how powerful this brushify effect is it's already worked out that there's mountains here right it's gone okay he's he's, he's raised this up so there needs to be something here that the player you know the player won't see grass up on this it's not a hill it, it's a mountain now because it's, it's quite a sharp incline so the gate says so it's automatically worked out that there needs to be some sort of rock here and a few random dotted rocks within that okay and a little tuft of grass on the top it works that out automatically for you that's how powerful this is so you can kind of almost now go absolutely crazy creating your design that you want right say you want sort of i don't know um, a little bit of a hill, okay, that you can see. Uh, don't worry about these these shades and these lightings. That will sort itself out when you um, smooth it out and, and build your lighting and things like that. Okay, see, it will sort itself out. Um, okay, and now you've got sort of this hill, right? And, and it's taken me, what, uh, probably five minutes to get everything set up. I mean, apart from the downloading of the actual Brashify pack, which probably took 20 minutes. Now that that's happened, I've got this cool kind of hill already within my environment right there you go I mean it it's not very big obviously um, but you can make this way bigger and it completely depends on what you want to do with your landscape now right so automatically I've now got myself a very large environment to work with I've got all the tools I need within Unreal to go ahead and build mountains hills uh, whatever I want I can make rivers if I want to we'll do rivers don't worry but um, and then once I've started also doing things like planting down uh, trees and stuff your environment automatically comes alive insanely quickly right i mean you've even got the details within this pack that's got like little flowers and stuff right so you don't even have to worry about adding in that sort of foliage it's built in within your packs it's a very powerful bit of kit to have on day one of making anything right you could go from having nothing to having a full-blown environment within half a day's work that's how much it really speeds you up okay um so with that in mind let's um very quickly just mess around a little bit um i'm gonna up this a little bit right and we're gonna create a little scene okay that's what the what this whole thing's about so i don't need all this environment this is gonna be purely just um it's just gonna be there for 
for our image we're going to make. Okay, I want some nice little hills in the background. Okay, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger actually. Um, yeah, and then we'll smooth them out a little bit. Right? Okay. So we're just going to do that, so that when we're sort of here, you get almost a mountainous feel in the background. We'll build out a little bit more, just so we've got ourselves covered a bit. Okay, I will smooth those off. They're a bit jagged for my liking, so I'm gonna I will smooth them off a little bit. <coughs> uh, I just want to say, by the way, I haven't given up on the horror tutorial. Uh, I know I did a couple of episodes of Doors and stuff, which I will do more of that as well. Um, it's just purely um, I've been trying to rack my brain around that issue I had. Um, once I figure that out, I'll be back on it. So there you go. So we can come away a little bit further, right? And you've got this cool little, almost looks like a mountain range. You can break this up as well. It doesn't have to be so exact, but there you go. Okay, so that's the general gist of landscaping, okay? You can literally go ahead and do it wherever you want. I don't want to smooth, sorry, I want to add stuff in. Yeah. Um, you could do a huge scale, right? 8,000 scale, which is massive, but, you know, uh, it's down to you guys what you want to do. Bring the strength right down. I'd say maybe a 0.8 should be okay. Click on noise and just tap away. Yeah, don't hold it down because you're gonna get some. You will get some crazy, crazy stuff. But um, tap it, yeah, and you can automatically see it's going up and down on your terrain, uh, and then just smooth that out, right? I mean, you can keep the the jagged effect if you want to. I mean, I, personally, I'm not a fan, but uh, automatically you've got these very, it's very random, very cool kind of environment, and then you know you can just dig in a little bit more, for example. So make this, you know, like a lot smaller. You could make pathways along this now. So let's click play. And you can go from one end to the other and just build pathways, right, through all this. And it, if you had, like, a pathway going down here, you've automatically got everything just kind of around the player, <coughs> excuse me, giving them this feel that they're in this huge environment when actually it's very, very small, right? Um, but they're gonna get this feel like they're gonna get this feeling that this is taking you know you hours to kind of plan especially once if you had a, a linear path through all this they're gonna they're gonna assume that wow you know these these guys have really taken their time <laughs> when actually just using a noise um, a noise uh, a noise tool has made this incredibly easy for us right and you can even do it so like for example Let's make this a little bit smaller again, and you know you can click erosion. So you could take this area where we just, you know, that very detailed area. Oh my god, sorry, I've got it on very fast, so it's moving me around quite a bit. There you go. So you could take this detailed area and 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 add in, you know, some weathered effects, right? So it looks like rain's been hitting here, and then you can also add in water for these low areas as well. Um, make it look like rain's just kind of. Uh, accumulated in there and then you could add a bridge in here or something like you know what I mean <coughs> the 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 options you have are phenomenal right so let's find out where we put our, our little range I think it was over here there it is um, so that's terrains right you guys get the gist I mean if you wanted to change things up now so this is grass this is my main layer if I picked desert for example give it a weight layer uh, and I decided to start painting with that, you you can start changing an area. So this is how you find in like MMOs where they have like you go from a jungle area to a desert area, right? They they will do something like this. The one thing you've got to be careful of is a lot of people will always complain that um for example working with this square they're using four different types of uh material um or paint as it were paint. Uh, and then they start airing out or they can't use more than four or you know whatever the issue is uh, and that's because th that's exactly the case you cannot use more than four um, within an area right that's why you want to be careful about making just one giant terrain otherwise you're going to find yourself hitting, hitting those issues so now we've got like a little bit of desert in here right okay you've still got the grass <coughs> to remove that just click on your 
procedural area. Oh, it's got no layer. Sorry. Give it, give it, uh, <laughs> create a layer. Uh, right. Click OK. Uh, and then that should. What? What? Let's go that. There you go. And that will just remove the grass. It'll keep the grass painting or the desert painting, but it will just remove the grass for you to make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so you do, it's the worst thing if you build a building on top of a grass area and you haven't built it thick enough and grass is poking through your floor, then you can't get rid of it. it. It's the worst. So this just gives you the option to get rid of those extra areas. Uh, that extra grass, the same, right? Um, okay, it's combining shaders. Once it's done, you'll see the effect, okay? Uh, and then let's just try another one. So let's say snow. Oh, what's happened there? Oh. Very, I'm not sure what's happened there at all. Let's put the let's put the desert back in. There you go. Um, we still got grass. I'm not. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be working as it normally would. Uh, let's give it a, a different layer. Let's try. Weird. Okay. Not sure why that's happening. But um, that's what should happen anyway. It should take away the grass, and you'll be left with just whatever uh, one you've put in there. Let's try snow. So again, same idea. Give it a, a weight layer uh, and paint away to your heart's content. This might take a couple of seconds um, for, to, to compile the shaders, but once it has, you should have this lovely kind of white effect. I'll just paint loads down while it's loading it in. Um, and that's that's your environments, right? It's so simple. So I, as I said, Brushify completely powerful tool to have at your disposal especially as a beginner uh, highly recommend it um, as I say to buy the ones depending on your project don't just buy them all because it's just a lot of money and it, w it wouldn't benefit you um, but if you're thinking of building like a, a especially large environments definitely uh, and, and realistic large and realistic environments buy it seriously it'll save you so much money uh, let's have a look at the snow there you go you got the snow uh, sitting nicely in the grass areas and these will also be affected like the mountains so if I was to uh, raise these up it will automatically put in the um, the mountain areas for me uh, should do yeah you can see it coming through there now look it's slightly snowy so it's a bit whiter than it probably normally would be but there you go right how easy is that okay you can't there you go you got that sort of cracked uh, cold snowy rock look uh, and I guess the same would happen with this as well there we go you get like a, a desert kind of feel so yeah can't recommend this enough um, the next thing I'll show you guys in terms of environments is adding in foliage and trees things like that um, then we'll take a look at adding things like the clouds backing because uh, obviously this is a blank project uh, we'll also look at world composition within this one so I will add in some extra environment and you'll see how that works uh, performance wise um, and if there's anything else you guys want to see in terms of environments or uh, sky uh, anything like that let me know um, in the comments and I will be more than happy to cover that as we go uh, I still have not forgotten about the Resident Evil uh, that is on my to-do list it is on my to-do list i promise we will be definitely doing the resident evil um camera setup tutorial that someone asked me for uh, i will do that i promise <laughs> it's on my to-do list uh, but thank you so much guys um for watching i will see you in the next episode uh take care bye